Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this rifle that you see in front of me and that you saw throughout the intro. This is the LWRCI Razorback A52. Uh, so if you see a Razorback A5 being discussed online and it doesn't have the spiral fluted barrel and it doesn't have an adjustable gas block, uh, that is the original, the, the one version. This is the two. This is a production gun uh, that first version was a limited edition. So uh, this is the one that's out there right now as of the recording of this video that you guys can pick up if you're interested in it. Um, but it's obviously chambered in 6.8 special and I'm going to delve into that a little bit uh, more here later in the video. Um, but since I know a lot of people will not watch this entire video, the reason for the development of 6.8 was to uh, in theory give better um, terminal performance in a um, 556 style AR-15 in terms of size and weight and all of those sorts of things than 556 can do. So this rifle here unloaded comes in right at seven pounds, one ounces. So right in line with a lot of AR-15s. And as the, the advertising 468 will say, it gives you 80% of the performance of 308 out to uh, 300 yards. And in general, that's true. However, uh, we're gonna get into, again, ballistics a little bit later on uh, more than I just covered there. So what we're going to do before we get into the details of the rifle and then ballistics, uh, we're going to check out what kind of groups you can get out of this rifle here and then we'll come back in, go piece by piece, and then a little bit of 6.8 versus other calibers out there. Now we're going to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this rifle. We have a uh, primary arms 1-8 to eight scope on there, sitting an arrow mount. And out there on the front is a uh, Bowers 375 Burrs can, uh, which is perfectly fine for 6.8 and also 350 Legend for those wondering. I, I get that question a lot. In the gun right now, we have some 90 grain uh, American Eagle. This is their Predator and Varmint load. And uh, then we got a couple other uh, loads up as well. Uh, definitely kind of gonna give a big thank you to Federal. Uh, they sent out the ammo that we used throughout this review. And uh, I just ordered some more from LAX Ammo, which is my ammo sponsor, but Federal came through uh, and got stuff to us when we needed it. So I appreciate that. So we will see how it actually shoots in this rifle. Pretty sure that was five shots. All right, next up we have something a little bit heavier. This is more of a hunting oriented load. It's the uh, MSR Fusion, uh, 115 grain, and it has a bonded bullet in there. So uh, definitely oriented for hunting and would do a heck of a job at smashing hogs or deer or uh, whatever you want to shoot with it really. Doesn't look too shabby from here. If I didn't mention it guys, it targets at 100 yards. I may not have mentioned that. I kind of just take it for granted at this point. Up next is going to be some just practice stuff. This is the Federal American Eagle. Um, full metal jacket, so nothing match or anything like that, but it's 115 grain as well. And uh, we'll see, again, how this particular rifle likes this load. I should also mention, guys, I just checked the uh, uh, thermometer. It's 107 degrees out here for those wondering. Pretty high humidity. We have a probably two to five mile an hour full value left to right wind. I know some of you ballistics junkies just love that. So <laughs> okay, we're at 300 feet of elevation. So there you go. Let's go check them out. Up first here, we had the 90 grain barbet load and just like normal, I know what to expect going into these uh, filmed accuracy portions because I test it when I'm zeroing the rifle. Uh, this one here, previously we shot an MOA group, but it opened up, of course, because the cameras are rolling, I guess. Uh, it's close still, it's at one point, like an inch and eighth, inch and a quarter, center to center on that one. Um, and then we came over here to the 115 grain hunting one and just a tad more center to center. We're right at an inch and three eighths there. Then down here with the American Eagle, that looks pretty similar size wise. Let's see. Yep, same thing. Inch and three eighths there. So um, close to MOA. I've sat MOA with it before. And I would say that if you wanted to, uh, dropping an aftermarket trigger in there would probably tighten that up. Um, but pretty darn close. And uh, we don't reshoot accuracy tests here. So it is what it is. I'm not mad about it, especially for a hunting rifle. Um, so we'll take it. 
I probably annotated it in the video, but I apologize for the audio during that portion. Um, that was months ago, but I still remember I forgot to plug in the actual uh, microphone for that test that so was all recording on the onboard camera mic, which is not the best. But either way, uh, getting into the details of the rifle here will work tip to butt for some semblance of order. Uh, it does ship with the A2 birdcage flash hider. Uh, it's not actually this one. The one it ships with actually matches the finish there on the barrel, um, but I don't know where that one went because I took it off and you guys saw we fired it mostly suppressed with the Bowers verse 375 can on there. Um, but it does come threaded uh, 5 eighths, so any of your standard 30 cal cans out there will work on there and go on there just fine, no issues there at all. Uh, moving on back, the barrel here is a 16.1 inch heavy barrel, so heavy barrel profile, and it has the spiral uh, threaded fluting, which not only looks cool, um, I believe, and I know it's debated online, that it does help in heat dissipation, and it also, of course, cuts down uh, the weight of the barrel, which on a heavy profile barrel certainly does matter. It has a 12 inch uh, rail section here, and then I just actually removed uh, the retention screws that you guys saw there. It's a pretty cool little program. And then if you pull forward on the top and pull up, it will reveal the short stroke gas piston system. Now, I did that really just to give you a better look at the barrel because we'll kind of get into that. Now, uh, the folks over at WRCI, which I believe is in Maryland, they cold hammer forge their barrels in-house. And then they have, I believe it's called Nycor, the finish that they put on there, but essentially it's a um, nitride, melanite type of finish. It's gonna give you really good Rockwell hardness, good corrosion resistance, good lubricity, good barrel life, all of those sorts of things. So really high quality barrel in every way. There's not a lot of folks online that are gonna have anything bad to say about LWRCI barrels. They have a very, very good reputation uh, in the industry. And this one, again, has been great. You guys saw how it shot out there with those loads. Again, it has shot better, but it's still shot just fine out there even uh, with the loads we had out that day. Um, so moving on back, the short stroke gas piston that we talked about there has two settings on this one, which I kind of like. It's very simplistic in that way. Uh, so we have our unsuppressed and then uh, suppressed uh, point, pointed up. It actually says S up. So it's very, very simple in that regard. And uh, of course you can adjust it with the top of the handguard on there. The top of the handguard there comes off. Uh, and the reason it does that is for easy cleaning of the short stroke gas piston system. Um, so for those that are new, um, essentially with AR-15 variants, you have two different styles of operation. Well, three really, I guess you'd say. You have long stroke, which is pretty rare for AR-15. Short stroke, which is much more common, uh, like this one has here. And then we have direct gas impingement. So one of the benefits of having a piston versus direct impingement is that uh, all of your carbon and not all of it, most of it is gonna stay up here in the piston. Less is gonna come back here into the action of the rifle. That does a couple things. It obviously keeps it cleaner and then also keeps it much cooler. So essentially, um, as the bullet travels past the gas block, uh, gas is vented off, comes through the gas block here, pushes this piston rod that you guys see right here, and then that taps the bolt carrier group and causes it to go back. You'll see where that contacts it here in just a second. So um, there's no gas being transferred directly from the barrel into the action. So a lot of folks do like that. Um, some folks think it's more reliable. I don't know. We'll let you guys uh, debate that one down below in the comment section. I will say though that this rifle right now is just over 1500 rounds in terms of you know the use that we put through it and it's not had a single malfunction. I, I watched a video, a SHOT Show video of uh, LWRCI rep couple years ago said that the rifle could easily, this is his quote, uh, go 5,000 rounds without ever having to clean uh, the gas system. <laughs> I've never cleaned the gas system through 1,500, so, so far he's on point on that one. Uh, the rail is free floated, we should mention that, um, and it is kind of a unique design. So uh, LWRCI now has some uh, MLOC options out there across their lineup, but they don't have it for this particular rifle yet. I'm not sure if that's coming. I don't know personally, but just throwing it out there. But if you want to add rail sections, they actually do sell them. They're 1913 rails that you can plug and play at the three, six and nine o'clock position if you want to mount like a bipod or a vertical foregrip or lights, lasers, etc. And the way that this um, top handguard actually goes onto the bottom handguard is nice as well. It's all machined here out of the aluminum. There's uh, four or rather six sections, three on each side, and it goes into these steel pins here on the actual handguard and the reason it's precision done like that is that so every time when it goes back and you actually torque everything down it's just hand tightening and it has rubber o-rings on there so you don't have to worry about over torquing it uh, when you torque everything down 
it goes back and returns to zero if you guys are using like uh, thermals or night vision plugins, those sorts of things, uh, which is probably more common on this particular model than it is on a lot of others because a lot of folks really like 6.8 for hunting and I'm absolutely going to be putting myself in that category as well. I think it's an excellent hunting round uh, for sure. When I was discussing the top cover, I should have pointed out that it is T marked all the way down. So the upper as well as the handguard, if you guys want to use that system for sort of marking it and referencing it when you add accessories uh, to your rifle. So uh, continuing back to the upper and lower receiver, there's some cool stuff going on here for sure. LWRCI has developed a reputation as making one of the better ambidextrous uh, setups out there on the market in terms of controls. I tend to agree with that. Uh, both the upper and lower receiver are forged. So uh, the upper here, as you can see, has a pretty unique extension that goes out here. And they do that for strength because with the 6.8, obviously, it's got a little bit more pressure than 5.56. Five, and they want to keep everything in line because uh, barrels tend to torque like that um, as they come back in the extension. And that's a very, very, very solid lockup system. If you guys look around at uh, other competitive offerings, like uh, Seekins, I know, reinforces the left side of their upper receiver for the exact same reason. Bravo Company just came out with their new Mark II upper for the exact same reason. And LW. RCI has it here on this rifle again for the same reason. Um, so it is forged in house. The actual ejection port is enlarged for the 6.8 cartridge, uh, just increasing in terms of reliability. We do have a shell deflector for you left handed folks out there. That way you won't get smacked in the face um, with the rounds forward assist, which I do like. I know it's a controversial feature out there for reasons I don't understand, but uh, that's a video for another day. And then ambidextrous controls in terms of the selector lever that we have here. Also in terms of the bolt catch and bolt release. So you'll see there you can lock the bolt to the rear. You can also drop it. Um, and then the same would be true here for the magazine release, which is a traditional magazine release here. And then if we push it, you'll see it comes out here on the left side because you can drop it either way. And in terms of full ambidextrous controls, it has it. I know a lot of folks like that. Um, I absolutely, it's not a must have for me, but it's a nice to have in my opinion. Um, our magazine well there is flared, um, which is nice, aids in quick reloads. We have this uh, trigger guard here that's unique to LWRCI. Gives you a little bit more room in there if you're shooting with gloved hands. Again, I think a lot of folks looking at this gun are uh, going to be hunters. So if you're out there hunting and you're wearing gloves, which I probably should be doing right now because I'm kind of freezing out here right now, um, it's nice because you have a little bit more room in there for the gloves. This assembly of the rifle is pretty standard stuff. We're going to push our pins out. Of course, I just made sure it was clear, as you guys saw in the last scene that we filmed. Uh, your rear pin is going to come out pretty easily. However, I should note it actually just came out there. It's interesting. LWRCI does include this little uh, rubber, rubber gasket piece, and it kind of fits down into the lower receiver. And what that does is it ensures you get a really solid lockup every time. Um, and also, the way that they do their uh, upper and lower piece that mates up here at the front takedown pin. It's super snug as well. Um, I've taken this gun apart number, numerous times rather, and I still kind of need a bullet tip to get it through there on the front. Very, very snug, great fit and finish in that regard. There's just nothing to complain about there. They do it right at LWRC I in that regard. And then taking our upper apart, we do have our bolt carrier group that you guys see there, and then our ambidextrous charging handle. You guys can see if you look in there that it does have the M4 feed ramps and all of those sorts of things. I should also note here as I'm looking in there now, the interior is Cerakoted. The entire rifle, of course, is Cerakoted, as you guys I'm sure have noticed at this point. But unlike a lot of companies, uh, LWRC, they actually do the Type 3 hard anodizing first and then Cerakote over it. So all of the protection that you get from Type 3 hard anodizing in terms of corrosion resistance, all those sorts of things, is added to all the corrosion resistance and durability that you get um, from Cerakote. So in terms of a finish, it's excellent, and there's not really a lot to complain about there on the upper receiver. Our uh, gas block there, again, made in-house by them. It's ambidextrous. You can pull on it either way. Now, I should note that it is not a gas-busting charging handle, meaning that when uh, a lot of guns, particularly DI guns, when you're shooting them suppressed, you'll have a lot of gas coming back in your face. It can make your eyes tear up, those sorts of things. However, since this is a piston design, it's simply not necessary. I had no issues at all in any way, shape, or form with noticing gas coming back in my face when firing suppressed. So uh, here we have our bolt carrier group. It is nickel boron finished across the board, both the bolt and the carrier. Back here at the rear, 
you guys can see this portion here is a little bit enlarged and it has those cutouts in there. Those cutouts are for d dirt, grease, grime, whatever could be in there. Um, gives them kind of a place to go while still allowing the cycling of the bulk carrier group itself. And then you'll note that up there, it has that little recess cutout. And what that's for is that so that every time you get a consistent placement of that short stroke piston, actually hitting it and pushing it back in the exact same way each time. Additionally, this enlarged portion back here on the rear prevents carrier tilt inside of the receiver extension. So uh, one of the things that kind of plagued uh, piston systems when they first came out in AR-15s probably 10, 15 years ago, is that you'd often see a lot of results, or rather a lot of evidence of carrier tilt, excuse me, if I could talk today. Um, and essentially the place that you'd see that most would be right down here in the lower receiver. You'd see it kind of getting gouged out every time it would cycle because the carrier itself would tilt and actually go into the receiver extension like that. Um, so this is specifically designed to prevent that as is their piston system itself. Um, up here on the bolt, we do have, it's marked 6.8. So for those that don't know, the bolt on a 6.8 is a different size than a 5.56 bolt. It's just a little bit larger. It also works with 224 Valkyrie for those of you guys that are familiar with that. And this one here has a claw extractor and it has a dual spring extractor as well. LWRCI came out with that years ago. They use it across as far as I know anyway, across the board in all of their different calibers. It's a fantastic system, very, very reliable function. And uh, it's just designed as a, essentially a product improved uh, bolt. And in that regard, I would say that they're probably correct. If you look around the market today, at least at the end of 2019, when I'm filming this, you see a lot of companies kind of trying to improve upon the bolt and bolt carrier group. And uh, there's ways to do it for sure, in my opinion. Mill spec's good, but you definitely can make it a little bit nicer. Now, one of the, Probably the only that I can think of uh, kind of con I'm going to give to this rifle is the trigger. So the trigger has that nickel boron finish as well. It's polished, um, but in terms of pull and break, it feels very mill speckish. Breaks right at five pounds, um, but it definitely could benefit from having an aftermarket trigger in terms of the accuracy that you get out of it. I know some folks like mill spec um, for duty grade use, and I'm, I tend to be one of those as well. Um, but I think a lot of folks can look at this, again, primarily as a hunting or just a fun gun as well. And a little bit nicer trigger, I think, would help. It would help with the groups that you guys saw out there for most folks as well. Uh, continuing on back, we do have the H2 buffer in there. It comes standard, our standard receiver extension, 7075 T6. And then back here, our end plate is their LWRCI uh, QD system. So it has the quick attach on both the left and right side of it. Um, I do prefer that versus one that kind of sticks out the back. Both of them work for sure. I just think you have less movement in the gun with it on the side there. Um, so that's my two cents anyway. The grip that comes standard is Magpul's MOE Plus grip. It has the uh, sort of rubberized overmolding texture. I'm not a huge fan of the overmolding, uh, but I know a lot of folks love it. If you live in cold environments, it's probably pretty good. Your hand definitely sticks to it, but when it gets really hot out, it's not the greatest in my opinion, but again, that's personal preference. That's not a good or bad thing. Uh, the other con, I just thought of it now as I'm looking at the rifle. The other con I saw is that our uh, castle nut here is not staked in any way that I can see. Um, however, I did attempt to move it back and it definitely has some sort of thread locker on there. Um, so some folks like that over staking, I guess, again, that could be a preference thing, just something to point out, but it definitely has thread locker on there for sure. Our stock here is LWRC's uh, proprietary stock, and I really like it. I'm, I'm not alone on that. You'll see a lot of folks online really uh, giving it high praise. It has sort of a, a moderate swell there for, uh, you know, your cheek weld, if you will. Um, how much you like that is largely dependent on uh, your facial bone structure, but I think for a lot of folks, they're going to like that versus a, a skinnier mill spec uh, stock. It doesn't have much wobble. There's a ton if you just kind of torque it here at the end, but when you close it down, it gets reduced, as you would imagine. It has the quick detach sling swivel points again on the right and the left side, and it also has your traditional uh, adjustment point there as well. And you'll note there that because of that a little bit wider cheek weld, it also has a little bit more contact surface on your shoulder, so that way when you're firing, uh, it just has more 
surface area to distribute the recoil over. Before we jump into the 6.8 round, which I'm about to do here in just a second, I wanna mention that the rifle does ship with LWRCI's skirmish sights. They're fantastic. They're excellent iron sights in every way. Um, in terms of when they're in the up position, as you see here on our front sight, they will not go back unless you press the detent there on the back. And then when they're in the down position, you don't need to press anything, you can just pop them up if you need a quick sight pitcher. The same is true there on the rear. And the rear sight actually has multiple different diopters, uh, which is great. So that way you can set it up as you see fit for low light or quick shooting or however you want to, um, but simply fantastic sights. And they do come uh, with the rifle standard, as I mentioned. All right. So let's go down the rabbit hole with 6.8 ammunition versus other uh, types of ammo out there in the small frame, as we'll call it, AR-15. So right now, probably the most common ones out there, of course, we have 5.56, which is still around and is still a very good cartridge that's doing a lot of things. Um, and then we have 300 Blackout, which is kind of gaining popularity. You're going to see in terms of hunting, a lot of guys going with 7.62 by 3.9. Um, that's great. Uh, and then we have 6.8 uh, Special, which we have here, and then uh, 6.5 Grendel. Those are probably the most popular ones out there. And every one of those cartridges has pros and cons to it. I just need to point that out. I don't want to say either one's better or worse for just across the board as a blanket statement. Certain ones have advantages in certain scenarios. So the 6.8 Special round uh, was designed, um, as the, the lore says anyway, and I don't doubt this at all, um, was designed to give... Uh, again, a little bit more energy transferred on target at intermediate ranges. Um, I believe it was SOCOM that went to several different uh, ammo makers and Remington took up the challenge initially to create a round that, again, would work in your standard frame AR-15s um, and just deliver more energy on target. And it definitely does that, um, out, especially out to three or 400 yards. The 6.8 Special essentially doubles the bullet weight of most 5.56 five, rounds and delivers energy at a much greater rate um, within those distances than 5.56 five, can. But what LWRCI discovered in their testing was that the limitation for it um, at the time uh, that was causing issues in terms of reliability was magazines. Now there's a few different magazine options out there that will work in your actual uh, standard AR-15 frames. Um, they look generally like this from PRI, or you'll see the curved ones here like the uh, CPD uh, magazine that we have here. So um, these are actually modern mags that have come out in probably the last two years. And both of these are actually pretty darn good in terms of reliability with 6.8. However, at the time, Back when uh, LWRCI was developing their 6.8 for military contracts, they found that they just simply weren't good enough um, in terms of reliability. So they paired with Magpul to create these magazines. Now, these look very close to your standard uh, Gen 3 PMAG when you're looking at them. And they have all the features of the Gen 3 PMAG, for the, those that don't know, which is a fantastic magazine. Um, but they are just a touch larger than your standard uh, AR-15 mags. So uh, I say that to point out that the actual lower on this rifle from LWRCI will not accept uh, standard uh, Stanag magazines. So it's just a touch larger. And these magazines, um, both the one that you see here with uh, full capacity, and then they have reduced capacity ones for guys who live in states uh, that require it for hunting. Um, but they're not super expensive, and honestly, if you're looking at this rifle, the cost of magazines probably isn't your biggest worry, uh, especially with the cost of ammo as well. Um, but it is designed to work specifically in this lower, so just kind of keep that in mind. There are other 6.8 rifles out there that you guys are going to see um, on the market, and they will take your traditional Stanag style mags. Again, though, I think kind of on the on the edge of reliability when you just need, need it to count. This one is a better option from all the testing I've seen. Uh, 6.8 has been adopted by several militaries across the world. Um, so there's a lot of documented testing out there with this round in terms of reliability in a lot of different conditions. And LWRCI actually makes, as far as I know, all of the military adopted rifles uh, in this caliber. I could be wrong there, but I don't know of an exception to, to that. Um, but let's get into the caliber. So 6.8 versus 5.56, like I said, essentially you're doubling the weight. So most 5.56 rounds are going to be somewhere in the range of 55 grain to 77 grain. Uh, here with the 6.8, uh, you're generally speaking 110 grain on up, right, to 140-ish. Somewhere in there is what you're generally going to see. And when 6.8 first came out, I should point this out as well, uh, there really weren't a lot of uh, quality... Um, bullets that had a, sort of a higher BC for the caliber. Um, so what you would see is a lot of guys at the time were saying uh, 6.5 Grendel is a much better round if, in terms of energy uh, beyond 300 yards. And for large, for, and 
somewhat to this day, again, caliber comparisons are a nightmare, but uh, generally to this day, that's, that's true with most rounds. However, 6.8 recently, in the last probably two or three years, has uh, a lot of you know, ammo companies have developed loads um, that have a better BC. So what you guys saw, I think we shot the uh, 90 grainer out there from uh, Federal. That's a great load. And when you compare the 90 grain 6.8 to the 6.5s um, in like 110, uh, weight, then they compare really well out at distance as well. So the 6.8, um, as rounds continue to be developed, uh, seems to be even a better, more versatile round uh, that can compete at longer ranges. But that said, I would say, in general, 6.8 shines um, out of a 16-inch barrel because 16, one of the beauties of 6.8 is that it burns most of its powder out of a 16-inch barrel, so you don't really need a 20 or anything like that to get optimized performance, but essentially the round shines versus all the other competitors that we mentioned earlier in terms of uh, calibers out to 300 yards. It delivers a ton of energy uh, within those distances, really out to 200, it's it's really good as well. And in terms of drop um, out to two, 300 yards, it's not bad at all. Uh, the 760 by 39 and the 300 blackout are gonna be way worse. So you have a flatter trajectory there with that as well. But in terms of performance, I'd be very confident with it on any kind of medium-sized game, hogs, deer, uh, even some larger animals. And I would also say that, uh, again, just know how your round performs in different mediums, but I think 6.8 is a great personal defense round as well. Um, I, if I had to put you know, a threat down, I'd feel more confident with 6.8 for sure than I would with 5.56. Five, now, both will absolutely do the job very well uh, if you do your part as a shooter, but it's definitely a good round uh, for, you know, medium-sized game, including bipedal game, um, for sure. Uh, down the road, I'm gonna do a full video on 6.8 and probably 6.5 Grendel as well, because I think there's a lot of questions about them and there's pros and cons to each. But the 6.8 absolutely is a great hunting round. And if you're running around and you don't wanna have to carry an AR-10 because of the weight uh, considerations, then like I said, in general, you know, do your own comparisons out there and, and read the data for different loads that you're looking at. You are gonna get pretty close to 308 performance in terms of energy transfer on target with the 6.8. Um, just a very, very good round, and I should also add on that, one of the downsides that you get is it does have a little bit more recoil than 5.56, five, but it's not bad at all. I would say it's pretty comparable in terms of perception in this system anyway to my uh, 7.62 by 39 AR. Just a couple more points to touch on before we close the video out, guys. Um, one thing to clarify that I'm sure people have already asked because they didn't watch the whole video in the comment section is, uh, is the Army switching to 6.8 SP? PC. So as of right now, the answer to that is no. Uh, it is a proprietary 6.8 cartridge that they've developed um, alongside Six Hour and several other companies. And uh, that said, the benefit of that is that you're probably going to see new actual bullet designs coming out for 6.8 as that innovation happens because companies are spending millions of dollars in R&D. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, over the last two or three years, you've seen a lot of bullets coming out with better BCs for 6.8 SPC, and that probably has something to do with it. So it's not gonna be, at least as of right now when I'm filming this, the 6.8 SPC that they're going with, but it will be likely, again, as of when I'm filming this, the 6.8 that they will go with in that likely will transfer to better bullet design uh, for this cartridge as well. So it's kind of a win-win there. Um, in that regard. And the final point that I'm sure folks are gonna ask about is going to be price point because it's always important regardless of what you're looking at. Um, and LWRCI is absolutely a top-notch rifle company. Uh, if you look around the internet, you're not gonna see folks saying they have problems with LWRCIs very often, if at all, uh, particularly in their 6.8 models. They kind of have a reputation of being the king of 6.8. And um, like I said, this rifle's had a grand total of zero malfunctions of any kind. All I did when I got it in was uh, lubricate the bolt carrier group, and after that, we just zeroed it and went out and did some shooting that you guys have probably seen. You'll see some more here in just a second at the end of the video. but. It's a great rifle, yeah, fit and finish are flawless. Uh, performance has been great. I like the adjustability of it. Um, the round performs very well in this package. The weight is excellent. Uh, you guys are probably gonna see some hog hunting videos here as soon as it warms up a little bit uh, with this particular rifle. So you'll be able to see some uh, downrange performance that we're gonna do uh, with it when we do that. And uh, if there's other things you guys want me to do with 6.8, again, like I said, I'm probably gonna do like a whiteboard of truth video as I've done in the past with 6.8 and 6.5, just to kind of discuss that. But um, that's pretty much it. It's a fantastic rifle. Um, it's not inexpensive though. So the downside of it is the MSRP on this one right now, this particular model, which is kind of like their higher end 6.8 one, is I believe $2,600. And um, 
it's not cheap, but it's it's excellent. Um, they also make other 6.8 rifles um, that are going to come in at a little bit lower price point if that's what you're into as well. But if you have the budget for this and you're looking for a relatively lightweight um, hunting package that can deliver a lot of energy downrange and carry you know 30 round mags with it, um, I would definitely look at this rifle if you have the budget. It, it performs for sure, and I would definitely recommend it. So. That's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, by all means, post down below in the comments section. As always, if you aren't subscribed and you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you guys are subscribed, you're not seeing two to four videos a week here on the channel, make sure you sign up for my email list. You can do that over at my Facebook page or over at my website, mrgunsandgear.com. Just sign up. I send out at most one video a week, or excuse me, one email a week, and I don't even send that out every week but all it has is just the videos that have been released since it last went out because these days for whatever reason uh, YouTube doesn't show all my subscribers my videos and that way there's no social media giant between the two of us um, and I can just send the videos out and you guys can get the content here on the channel if you guys have questions that you absolutely need answered the best place to reach me is over at my Facebook page as always I get to everybody over there sometimes it takes me a few days because there's one of me and hundreds of thousands of you but I will respond um, when I get a chance to do so over there to all the questions that do come in. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. Truly appreciate it. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.